Hi everybody! It's Wednesday and you know what that means. It's new comic book day. Yay! So, ooh, whoa! So guess who, um, recorded an entire episode of new comic book day and didn't turn their microphone on? Me. So, we're gonna, we're doing it live. We're doing it again. All of the comics today were purchased, as always, from Greenburn Comics in Dearborn, Michigan. If you do not live in the Metro Detroit area, though, do not let that stop you. There are many local comic retailers all over the United States, all over the world, and you can find someone who would very enthusiastically like to sell you these comics and hundreds of thousands more. So down below in the information box, I have a link to help you find your local comic book retailer. All right, we only have three titles this week. I know there was none last week and that was because I'm lazy and it was free comic book day. And so we were working all week long preparing for free comic book day and it was a huge success. It was great. If you follow me on the Instagrams, you may have seen some of it. Also posted some on Snapchat. So if you do not want to miss out on future things like that, make sure you follow me on the other social media, all of the links to which are also located below. And let's get this out of the way. If you like me, if you like listening to me talk about comics or Supernatural or beauty or following me around Trader Joe's, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can also toss a like my way. That would be great, but I digress. None of this is about my comics for this week. So let's talk about them. Pick number one, Gwenpool number two. So this came out really fast, I feel. Last week was Gwenpool Zero, which if you didn't read any Howard the Duck, like I didn't, sorry, I get a itchy in my eyeball. Anyway, so if you didn't read any Howard the Duck and you missed Gwen's origin, uh, you could pick up number zero and that kind of just compiles all the stuff that she was in previous to her actual issue. So number two, we find Gwen joining a powered team led by Modok, Modok, M-O-D-O-K. Oh, duh. It was written by Christopher Hastings, art by Guri Hiru, which I am positive I am saying wrong, and I'm, I'm very sorry, Mr. Guri Hiru, Ms. Guri Hiru. I'm gonna Google later and find out. Uh, anyway, so. Gwen is an agent of a Modok, and she has to uh, continue her mercenary things, basically. But now she's a henchman. I think she's feeling kind of all about being a henchman. Also, we get to see Thor of the Lady Variety. I'm really excited about this title because Gwen isn't powered in any way. And if you know me, then you know that my favorite superhero... I'm sorry. I think I have a hair on my eyeball. I'm just going to power through. Anyway... If you know me, you know my favorite superhero of all time is Hawkeye, who is also not powered. I like non-powered dingus humans running around being like, I can fight with Captain America, why couldn't I? Because um, that's how I live my life. Of course I can do it if I want to do it. And that's Gwen. Of course she can be a hero because she wants to. Um, and maybe... Maybe it's a little bit more dangerous than she thought it would be. Maybe fighting Lady Thor without any powers uh, could lead to broken bones. And I think we're going to deal with that in future issues. We kind of start to deal with it this one, but it's still, it's still got all the humor that I would expect from a Marvel title of this type. And I really liked it. So this is definitely finally going into my poll. And I'm excited to read the rest of them. Cool. Next up. This was recommended to me by my coworker, Dan. And it is not something that I would normally pick up. But I, um, it's really good, actually. So it is Harrow County. This is number 12. So I have not read issues 1 through 11. And I am probably missing major plot points. I will turn to my good friend Google for the answers to my questions. And um, I feel like if you want to jump into a uh, comic series and you're like, oh, it's on number 12, I don't have the money to catch up, uh, you don't need to. Just jump in. You obviously have the internet if you're watching me. So 
we can, uh, you can do as I do and turn to our good friend Google for all the answers to your questions. And then when you get some cash or you feel so inclined, you can go back and get the trades from your local comic book shop. Anyways, Harrow County is uh, spooky. It is a horror story and it is written by Cullen Bunn, art by Hannah Christensen. I don't usually read spooky things. I read Walking Dead, uh, which is, I guess, would be considered spooky as zombies. This one has ghosts and children, which are inherently scary, and bleeding dolls. Right there. I don't think the doll is actually bleeding. Uh, also inherently scary. So this particular one, I feel, wasn't... It was very, like, poltergeisty, which is cool. Poltergeist was terrifying. Um... And this is, this is ghosts. This is evil spirits. This is um, all of that stuff and more. And the story was really interesting. This isn't something that I would pick up on my own without having someone recommend it to me. And I'm glad that I gave it a chance because I'm going to, I'm going to read the rest of them. So this one is also going into my poll. I really want to know what's going to happen. I hope there's more weird children. I hope there's more ghosts. I hope there's more dolls. I hope there's more witches. I just hope there's more. And last, but n not least, because it is my pick of the week, we have something from a series that I was my first ever comic experience. Archie. So uh, as a child, I was bought Betty and Veronica from the grocery store pretty much every week. And they were the first comic books I ever read. And I loved them. I was definitely more of a Betty girl than a Veronica. And I thought Archie was a dingus, but uh, I picked this up mostly because Betty and Veronica is coming out in July and I'm super excited about that. And I kind of wanted to get kind of an in into the world. And I saw that the previous story arc had kind of ended. So I thought this would be a good chance to jump in. And it is, it's Betty and Veronica. I mean, it's, it's this world, Riverdale. The story is really light. We have this in our, um, I believe it's our older kid section and uh the story is nice i mean it's it's a romantic story it does deal with high schoolers but it's a light story archie is dealing with not getting what he wants and accepting it because it means that someone else can be happy someone that he loves and i think that's a beautiful a beautiful thing to show people that you know sometimes you accept that things aren't going to be the way you want them because it means something better for people that you love. And I love that. Love this. Uh, Jughead is in it and Jughead is great. So I'm going to have to pick up the Jughead comic. He's just so expressive. <laughs> and I love his little paper crown. And Jughead, uh, they have officially said is asexual, which is neat. It's a cool thing uh, to have tweens and kids exposed to. I mean, he's always been asexual. So if you look back at the comic show, yeah, okay. Um, but it's good that kids see that this has a name. So that if this is something that they feel applies to them, they have, they have a name for it. And I think that uh, whenever you're feeling out of place or feeling like you don't belong because you feel like there's something wrong with you, having a name for what you feel is wrong with you is a huge asset. Because if you have a name for something, then you know how to find other people who also feel that way. So Archie is my pick of the week this week. It's real gentle and it's real nice and it's real fun and I really like it. And these are all three of them again. And remember, they are available starting today and you can pick them up wherever comics are sold near you. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye.